Hi everyone, I'm Daniel, and let's talk a minute about Arcane Initiate, the mystic ally that came out in the core set. It's an interesting card. For mystics, it's a cheap ally that shores up one of the major weaknesses of the class, finding their cards. As a free trigger ability, you can search the top three cards of your deck for a spell card and draw it. It's a nice way to grab extra cards, and mystics really do need their spells to do much in the game. It's a nice pool of health and sanity too. Sometimes you'll need a place to put horror that you've taken from using some of your spells. But it comes at a price. The Doom token means that you might not want to play it on turn one. If you do, you'll need to make sure you can get rid of it before the agenda advances. And while the card draw is nice, Arcane Initiate doesn't do much else for you. Notably, there's no boost to willpower or any other relevant skill. Arcane Initiate is a well-designed card. You're never unhappy to put her in a standard Mystic deck, but once your card pool starts to get bigger and you're ready to play investigators who have other plans for the ally slot, you won't feel bad about putting her back in the box every now and then. But therein lies the challenge for designing new cards. How do you make a new and exciting card without making Arcane Initiate irrelevant? Well, in the case of Mystics, they have struggled to even come up with new allies. There are only 13 Mystic allies total compared to over 20 in each other class. And at level zero, there are very few options, only five, compared to 14 in Seeker. Now in that of itself might not be a problem. Maybe there's something in the design notes about mystics not being able to have too many allies. But let's take a look at their abilities. Ald McBride and Alyssa Graham are both good allies that fulfill important roles in their archetypes. Chaos Token Manipulation and Dex Scrying. So I'll play them in Jim and Gloria, but not really anywhere else. That's fine, archetype support is important, and they seem appropriately costed for what they want to do. However, let's look at Familiar Spirit. Well, you're trading your ally slot for an arcane slot, and that's not ideal. It's cheap, I guess, and the soak is something. So any mystic could be interested if they're going for a lots of arcane slots build, but they'd also be interested in arcane initiate. Take both, maybe? It feels underwhelming, but guess what? Whenever you design new cards, some of them are going to be a little worse than average. On the other side of things, David Renfield turned out to be a little too good. He's kind of a backwards arcane initiate. Mystics do need resources to pay for their expensive spells after all, and this guy gets you resources as a free triggered ability. In a lot of scenarios, this ability was pretty fair. You got one or two resources and then tried to get him into the discard pile before the agenda would advance. The problem was that there are also a lot of scenarios where you can stack tons of doom on him without it mattering too much, and suddenly you have this level 0 ally that was getting more than 5 resources a turn fast. So David Renfield landed on the taboo list. First he was chained to cost 3 XP per copy, probably because of the doom removal and asset rating available in the Scarlet Keys, but that proved to be too much. So the latest taboo list has him back down to 0 XP but limiting his resource generation to a maximum of three resources per exhaust. But anyways, as printed, David Renfield is a little bit too good. I didn't even mention that he gives you a willpower boost sometimes, but he's not completely broken. There are plenty of those cards, and most of them have landed on the list of taboos. He's just a little bit too good. And maybe that's inevitable. After all, you want to give players a reason to play the new cards. So that's what I want to talk about today. What are some cards that I think are still a little bit too good for their cost? First, a little more explanation. What makes a card a bit too good? There's a few things I looked for while compiling this list. First, the overall balance of the card. Does the ability warrant the level of the card, the resource cost, and the slots that it takes up? If it's hard to get the card into your deck or into play, it probably deserves a strong ability. Second, I don't mind strong abilities, as long as they're not outclassing other options or especially other investigators. I want to let player cards have a positive impact on the game, but some of these abilities start to trivialize the difficulty scenarios throw at you. It's especially a problem when these abilities fix problems inherent in a class and you stop needing to rely on other investigators to finish a scenario. Lastly, since I think assets have the most impact on the game because of their repeatability, I'm limiting this list to just assets. For the most part, I'm fine with strong events and skills. Take Heart is a fantastic skill that is probably a lot better than any other economy cards at level zero, but it's fine because it's hard to reuse and there's a chance of whiffing. Drawing Thin, however, 
is complete nonsense and deserves the taboo. Speaking of, I'm not including any cards that are already on the taboo list in some fashion, even if I think that the taboo change doesn't go quite far enough. <clears throat> Pathfinder. <clears throat> so, without further comment, let's get into it. The first one on this list is a Guardian card, but it's also a Mystic card. Brand of Cthulhu level 1 is mostly on this list because of its accessibility to Guardians. Why? Because it's a weapon that sits in an arcane slot. So no need for Bandolier anymore. And what's the problem with most weapons? They tend to be expensive. Uh, this one costs two. And weapons with uses tend to have the annoying odd health problem. If your weapon does two damage, you don't really want to waste a bullet on an enemy with just one health left. Well, Brand of Cthulhu lets you spend exactly as many charges as you need. And you only spend them when you succeed. So there's another problem fixed. And you won't even hit a fellow investigator if you fail. All this for one XP. There is a downside, but you should be able to avoid it. The whole package is just a little bit too good. Next, a Seeker card. And it's definitely not the only Seeker card in this list, surprise, surprise. Empirical Hypothesis is a customizable card, but I'm not even going to show the customization sheet. This thing is incredible at just 0 XP. Okay, to lay it out there, just leave it on the Succeed by 3 mode. And every turn or two, you can probably get an Evidence and you get to choose when to spend them to draw a card. You can save them all for a round when you need to play all your cards but want to get back to your maximum hand size, or just spend one every turn. Why not? Okay, that sounds fine. Seeker has lots of other ways to draw cards, but this one doesn't take up any slots. Fine, let's look at the customizable sheet. You can pick another criteria to add if you really want to make sure you hit it every round. Entering a location with three or more shroud, or taking damage or horror are good bets and it costs you very, very little in XP. Hey, at least you can only have one of these in play, unlike our next card. Lucky Cigarette Case is a rogue staple. The level zero version, which simply draws you a card if you succeed by two, is a nice payoff for the succeed by X decks. But the level three version is bonkers. Now you get to search for a card in your deck, digging deeper the more you succeed by. I get it, rogue is the combo class and finding those pieces really is necessary for making the engine work. For 3 XP, this would feel a little bit fair if it was limited to the top 5 cards or something like that. At least it does take up an accessory slot, but I certainly have seen players get Relic Hunter and put two of these into play. Okay, Arcane Research. Mystic has a problem in this game. The upgrades to their spells cost too much XP, and they're pretty necessary because the level 0 versions are very risky since they don't have any skill boosts attached to them. Especially hurts if you don't have a 5 willpower investigator to start with. So, what ends up happening is that you spend a lot of XP just upgrading spells, and you never get a chance to play some of the other interesting Mystic cards. Well, the designers patched up this problem with Arcane Research and later down the rabbit hole. For the low cost of one Mental Trauma and a little bit of deck planning, you essentially pick up 7 extra XP. If you take two copies, and you should, that's 14 XP. The mental trauma isn't nothing, but you should be able to plan for some extra horror soak or healing pretty easily. The more you play Arkham Horror, the more times you play the campaigns, the less this matters. But unfortunately, the Mystic cards that have been designed since this was released follow the same patterns as the original spells. Essentially, the designers assume that you have two copies of Arcane Research. There's really not a good way to fix this now, but it is too good for its cost. For the record, I think Down the Rabbit Hole is a fair card for this kind of effect. Oh boy, Old Key Ring Level 3. I'm surprised it didn't get hit with a taboo in the latest list. Okay, let's think this through carefully. The Level 0 version gets you two guaranteed clues. The Level 3 gets you three. But you're not really playing it for three clues. You're playing it for six. Without any help from any other cards, you'll need to find six clues on locations with a shroud of one or two. That's not very hard to do, especially on three or four player. But this is also the class that has scavenging and resourceful, so just one copy of this can get you 12 clues. Oof, the disappointing part is that because of the shroud reduction, pretty much any survivor can do this. Did Daniela kill all the enemies too quickly? Well, she can get some clues. Why not? York especially likes this card because it is extremely cheap when he wants to play it straight from his discard pile. 
I've seen some suggestions of how to fix this one. Maybe it should exhaust when you pick up the extra clue so you don't just immediately clear out locations. Maybe it doesn't need the third key. I don't know. But part of the problem with old keyring is that most survivors have an open hand slot for it. And the reason for that is fire extinguisher level three. It only costs two resources and it does two damage forever. Yeah, it doesn't give you much of a bonus to hit, but this is the class that either doesn't care about failing or has some extra skills to commit. If you have access to this, you probably are gonna play it over the higher level survivor weapons since they all take up two hand slots. Sledgehammer level four even has the exact same top action. To be fair, all the melee assets in the game have a problem when comparing them to firearms, but even Guardian doesn't get a melee asset as good as this one at level three. Okay, I give you one more secret card. It's Dream Diary, any of them really. Maybe you're expecting Ancient Stones or that one archaic glyphs upgrade, but those are not a bit too good, they're way too good. Anyways, back to Dream Diary. It's extremely easy to translate at level zero. You just need to succeed by three on a skill test. And when you upgrade it at the bare minimum, you'll get an unexpected courage at the beginning of your turn forever. The cost is a hand slot and finding this in your deck. If only you were playing a class that could tutor tomes incredibly easily. Does any other class just get a plus two every round for basically nothing at a comparable level? Maybe rogue with high roller? But you're not getting plus two, you might be getting plus four. And that's why I put the Dreams of the Mad Men one here. Plus four when you're engaged with an enemy can be a huge help. The supposed weakness of Seekers is dealing with enemies, and you can either evade or punch at a pretty good skill value as long as this is around. Most of Seekers' enemy management is gated behind events. Big one-time effects like I've got a plan. But this thing is every single round. And Essence of the Dream is also a skill, so throw this onto a test with Grizzly Totem and you'll be drawing through your deck in no time. For 3 XP, this is a steal. Last one is a neutral card. Most neutral cards are actually overcosted because they need to be accessible by everyone. Not backpack level two, it's very cheap and looks for items or supplies through almost half of your deck. Even the slot is not that big of a deal. If you're looking for another body slot item, just play it after you've emptied out the rest of the backpack. The search effect is just incredible. I think it'd be perfectly costed at nine cards, up from six from level zero. So yeah, this one is just a bit too good. And that's the end of my list. There's definitely others to talk about. What do you think are some of the cards that are just a bit too good? Not the big game-breaking ones, just the ones that still could stand to be reined in a little bit. Let me know in the comments below. I'm interested to see what you think. And in the meantime, check out some of my other videos here on the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.